Well, this is the second part of our podcast. This is the second episode. I am here right now with the uh, undoubtedly master of the universe <laughs> slash historian Christian Pacarati. Hey there. Howdy. Um, well, uh, Esteban. Manureva. The, the young prodigy, the first linguist and only linguist of this island. Uh, we're going, uh, we're back stronger than before and we're going to talk about and discuss everything about the collapse the collapse narrative that has tarnished and has contaminated and has also ornamented in several different ways different perspectives the narratives that exist about Rapa Nui right so um, yeah definitely I mean I guess we should start with the idea of collapse and what are the publications about collapse and how we how does the public narrative actually takes the collapse idea and on maybe in a more academic level uh, people like Jer Diamond yeah well Jer Diamond uh, professor I don't remember which university in the United States California probably I UCLA at some yeah. some branch of the UCLA uh, Jer Diamond wrote collapse popular author Jer Diamond uh, I will refer uh, to him like that. No offense, of course, but uh, it's a popular book. It's a bestseller, and it uh, touches every chapter. It's, it's very, or it's pretty shallow in that sense because he's trying to yeah. make. All right, what, what's the book about? Right, the book Collapse tries to show that there were several societies, uh, ancient societies in this world that collapsed. That there was a social collapse, a sudden, sudden, abrupt loss of complexity in their social structures. Their economies collapsed. Uh, even they became degenerated morally, whatever. Right, a yeah, series of, of things. Right. Yeah. So he's showing this when it comes to Rapa Nui. Of course, Rapa Nui is like the, the symbol of this whole thing. It's the first chapter is, is Rapa yeah. Nui. And then he obviously touches uh, many other places that, according to him, uh, collapsed. Right? So the book starts from the collapse idea, and he tries to fit um, the situation and the, the events and the, and the development of many societies after they peaked, from his point of view, uh, to his narrative. Okay, so how can we make, uh, I don't know, the ancient Roman Empire, Rapa Nui, Mangareva, and other places uh, into this narrative? So he goes for the collapse scenario. He's not the first one to do it. it the, the book is not original when it comes to uh, claiming that this island collapsed, but he's the most successful uh, at it, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the whole idea about collapse is essentially, I guess... The major narrative of his book is pretty much like mirroring like the contemporary civilization and how history, according to him, goes on his hand and uh, and just and just evidence of ecocide as terms of what today is going about in the world and uh, what occur you know according to him happened on the island, which is you know. Brush likely truth, but not in its entirety, I guess. Yeah, uh, well, for example, when it, when it comes to, to Rapa Nui, the origin of the collapse um, uh, to apply to this island, right? Yeah. Starts with uh, the first few European visits, right? And especially when it comes to James Cook's visit that had a big impact in Europe, where we had 20 published articles or more, like maybe even 30, 40, who knows, but there are like 20 that are more well known. Some people on board of that ship that were scientists, the firsters, right? Yeah. Uh, they uh, thought that this island had been through much better times, that this island had been through uh, a great era of success, a golden age. Uh, like the classic interpretation, like uh, yeah, the societies go through a, a birth and then they go like through that a grammatical, yeah, like development phase, and, yeah. and then after the development stage, it, 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 it peaks, right, and then it starts declining, and usually the decline is very abrupt, unlike the development stage. Yes, it generally takes time and so on, and effort, and 
Well, so uh, the firsters thought that this island had been through better times. They thought that they found evidence that the island was much more forested than the 1774, the year in yeah. which they came. And they thought that this survived the few inhabitants that were here, dressed with barely loincloths and, and, and with uh, not very sophisticated tools, were unable to make the monuments that were uh, visible there, still visible. There were some fallen statues at that time, but... Yeah. And well, that, that's also crazy, right? That there were some fallen statues, the majority were still upright in 1774. So the origin of the collapse uh, story comes probably from James Cook's uh, 1774 account. And then in the um, 20th century, it kind of rose to prominence again. Right? Uh, what happened to these people? Uh, what, what happened to the trees? What happened to the forest? What happened to the statues? All the statues are fallen now. Yeah, right? definitely. And, um, well, the ones, just a notice to our uh, listeners that have never been to the island or have not read much about the island, yeah, all the statues that you can see upright in the monuments in the Ahu have been re-erected from 1956 onwards. Uh, so they were also fallen. So before 1956, it was all about fallen statues, it was all about deforestation. So what was the explanation for it? The easy way out? Collapse. Yeah, definitely. I mean, well, I guess most of the narrative... I guess it's because of the... on the major part... At some point, the evidence pointed down to the fact that two things occurred at the same time, right? The, the correlation. correlation, right? The correlation between the, the deforestation process of the island, which is fairly quick, and, uh, and I guess the, the, the process of, you know, the, the, the fast ending of the statue construction and the, 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 the occupation of uh, Ranoraraku as a as a major constructing point and as a probably uh, monumental uh, place on the island, as an epicenter of, of the culture in sure. its sense. So I guess, first of all, you need to define, and we were pretty much discussing this before the podcast, but uh, how do you define collapse, really? What is collapse in a sense? like? It's, a, it's an abrupt, it's a sudden abrupt loss of complexity that a society has to face. Yeah, like, uh, well, For example, the romantic idea of the fall of the Roman Empire. Both, yeah. both Roman Empires, like, not the Germanic Roman Empire, but the... the, uh, the, the Byzantine. Um, I mean the classic ones. Uh, Byzantine Empire yeah. and the uh, much yeah. earlier uh, Western Roman yeah. Empire, yeah. right, in four, 473 yeah. uh, AD. And the other one in 1453 AD, yeah. right? So, um, what? Well, the idea that they collapsed is completely ridiculous, right? Uh, they went through immense changes over time, and um, that started very early after um, the AD started, AD period, with yeah. the, and the Christianization of, of the Roman Empire, like like Constantine. Yeah, yeah, the change, yeah. well, the change of the capital from Rome to, Conta uh, to, to, Constantinople. to, Templa, to yeah. Constantinople was a big change. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and, so. and later emperors. So, it's, there was a change even in the people, the people that were alive in Rome, that were living in Rome in the 400s AD, were not the same people that lived in Rome in the 100 uh, BC. Yeah, they, they, were, they yeah. were different people, right? The 80% of the Roman army uh, in the 300s, 400s uh, AD were Germanic people. Yeah. Germanic people, right? When it comes to the fall of the Roman Empire in um, uh, uh, Byzantium, Constantinople, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, well, that's also not, it does not apply at all. Uh, do you know what was the size of that? so-called empire when it fell in 1453 it was half the size it was the size of this island yeah yeah it was a it was a tiny little thing the only thing left was the city right with the, its walls yeah and there were other people other nations other empires well, other, it, that, it, that had already taken over all around it yeah right? definitely so it was just a symbolic thing that the last fragment of what was once a great empire fell in 1453 yeah, but it's not like it it, it, 
It was a sudden abrupt collapse. The whole thing had been falling down since, well, centuries earlier, right? Centuries earlier, before the Crusades, man. But, you know, going back a little bit to, to the island process, like, the, the idea of collapse, given the fact that all of the statues were essentially toppled down, and the idea that the deforestation just collapse the way of living of people. But that's interesting. Let me uh, rephrase this in, in this way to ask you the question. Come on. What's the evidence for a uh, collapse here on Rapa Nui? Or what do they claim is evidence of a collapse uh, here? By the way, are you a collapse uh, fan? Oh no, I'm not a collapse fan. But all, right, all right. No, yeah, no, so I mean, I mean, with, with that out of with the that picture. out of the way, yeah, right? Yeah, with that out of the picture. How right? do uh, what do they? I say they, they collapse they people, collapse people claim yeah. it's uh, evidence for an alleged collapse on, on East Rack. Well, essentially, the, the, the deforestation probably might be the strongest of the evidences, right? Like the correlation between the, 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 lack, of, the lack of vegetation on the island and the, and the fast erosion, the problems that brings problems with agriculture, that brings, you know, all the, all the chain is unleashed, right? The whole yeah. ch chain is unleashed after that. I don't really believe in a collapse narrative in the sense of ecocide. I don't really believe the, the, the real collapse of the Rapa Nui people occurred during that period of time, but actually occurred much later. The whole idea of, of, of the collapse narrative is the fact that after, apparently, you know, the narrative is after the Moai nothing happened, and people just killed each other and that's it. That's you know, fairly what oral tradition strongly says too, right? Yeah. Like uh, different waves of wars, you know, the, the narrative of, of, of oral tradition. And, but it, it, I feel like it, it leaves a, a void in the sense of the, the, the rest of the chronology, right? Like what, what's up with the, 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 the change of social structure, right? Like it could be a collapse in that sense, like if you think about it, like it could be a collapse in the sense of Okay, we change the cult system into, and we adapt it to something different. But that's not collapse, if you ask me. Like that's just a transformation, right? That's, that's a forcing, death and rebirth. It's forcing the the, the meaning of, of collapse. Yeah. It's, it's it's yeah, trying it's, to make it something. It's else. it's a it's a it's a death and rebirth, right? It's not a collapse because it collapses so death and you know that's it, right? But uh, it doesn't fit the whole evidence and the rest of the chronology. You know, you will. I really have no idea how can you compel these two things together, but uh, well, I guess that's the major part for the major part: the collapse of the the the, the Moais and the collapse of the agriculture system. Okay, th did these two things actually collapse? Because uh, from from my perspective, the deforestation of the island is a very long process. Uh, we know that we have the pollen records. We have. Uh, Lots of scientific evidence to prove this. We have anthracology, that's the study of, of carbon, yeah, right? To charcoal yeah. and determine what kind of, of tree was there. So deforestation on this island was very gradual. And there's plenty of evidence to suggest that there were still some of the native palms in the 1700s. Um, we have plenty of evidence to, to prove already. There are even pictures of Toromito trees that ex existed well into the 20th century till the 1960s. And we have the evidence from uh, Policarpo Toro, uh, no, Policarpo Toro's brother, Pedro Pablo Toro, the man who was the first agent of colonization of this island from 1882 till 1890, uh, 1888 till 1892, who claims in a letter that he sent to the government, in a, in a document that he sent to the government, that there were lots of areas that have patches of toromito trees planted, uh, wood relatively big woods of Toromito. Toromito was a, not a big tree, it was a... A, a brush-like tree, a, a, yeah. A shrub, like, yeah, yeah, it was like, like a shrub. But still, and all of those patches of Toromito were dead because they were uh, bitten and eaten by sheep, right? Yeah. So the, the sheep ate the bark of it and the tree was dry, dried up and died. So he's only patches of dead Toromito, but it means there was Toromito before that. Before the sheep were introduced, there were still Toromito. So I'm not saying that there was no deforestation. There was a deforestation, but there's no collapse. It's a gradual process of deforestation that also had its reasons. Yeah, definitely. I mean, 
first of all, let's see, let's just go back to see what type of uh, vegetation was here on the island. What's the evidence of vegetation that the island had prior to, let's say, the arrival of the Westerners and the introduction of, of, of vegetation here? Yeah, it was not a jungle. It, it had a few dozen species of woody trees, plants, like uh, like some, some trees that are actually trees in other Polynesian islands, in Samoa and Tonga, for example. The paper mulberry the is paper a tree. The paper mulberry is a classic one, yeah. And that's a tree in, in Samoa. It's a tree. It's, it's 10 meters tall. It's, it's 8, 9, 10 meters tall. It gives shade. Uh, here on this island, the, the paper mulberry was just a plant that, that could have been grown indoors. Maybe. It's, it's a really small plant, yeah. man, and, and with a small trunk. But that, well, they considered a, a tree or a, or a shrub or a, a woody plant. A woody right? plant. Uh, even though here it never attained those sizes. Well, weather conditions also. Yeah, it's a drier island. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a subtropical island. It's not a, a, a wet tropical island. It's subtropical. We do have a winter here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's that's to take in consideration when it comes to the rest of the Polynesian islands. Because this is a very different environment for the rest of the Polynesian world. Yeah. Very few islands, if not just Aotearoa, probably, and Easter Island share a commonality in the sense of uh, of cold weathers, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe a couple of the islands in the, in the Australs, yeah. archipelago, Kermadex, well, Kermadex were, yeah. were abandoned at some point by the mm -hmm. few Polynesians who, who reached them, they abandoned them later. Right? Well, but, that's, but, that's but, another interesting thing. Yeah, we, th there, a, there's, uh, there has to be a podcast about that, yeah. too, right? Why yeah. were so many islands abandoned by Polynesians at yeah, some point? Yeah, definitely. The, oh. the so-called mystery islands. Well, that's a, that's a, that, that fits a lot with what we're talking about right now, you know, like the collapse, the, the process of collapse. And the, and well, w let's, let's go into, into that uh, because there are islands that actually collapsed, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, well I, which, which ones are the, the closest islands to Rapa Nui, to the, um, west, to the west, right? Ducey, Henderson, and Pitcairn. Yeah, so Ducey, Ducey Island. Uh, Henderson has plenty of evidence that it was once inhabited. There's tools there, there's rats there. Uh, it's an island that was settled. There were rats already when the first Europeans found it. Polynesian rats, of course. And um, it, it has plenty of tools, ancient tools, carvings and stuff in there. Then we have Pitcairn. Pitcairn was also uh, settled by Polynesian people in ancient times. And when it was resettled by the mutineers of the bounty in the 1790s, Fletcher Christian and his crew yeah. with Tahitian women, they found lots of tombs with skulls, with skeletons, with bones, carvings, petroglyphs, stuff like that. So, uh, and then after Pitcairn, we have other islands. We have uh, uh, Oeno, we have Temoy, also islands that seem to have been inhabited at some point. So these islands, plus many other mystery islands like uh, Howland and Baker, like uh, Palmyra, like Palmerston Atoll, yeah. like uh, Suwero, like uh, the Kermit Eggs, well, if, if were abandoned at some point. So those are islands that we could... Or so they were either abandoned or everyone died. died. Yeah. Right. Well, the thing is, like, those places are very hostile-like. Those are not really... Uh, uh, suitable, probably for for a major population to be installed there. So mm -hmm. probably something must have happened in order for the people to leave. Yeah, and that's stress, man. It, it's it's uh, natural, naturally originated stress, especially from the so-called Little Ice Age that yeah. started with the 1300 AD event. Um, uh, there's an author that has written a lot about uh, this 1300 AD event, Patrick D. Nunn. Yeah. He's the, the foremost expert on that topic. Uh, several articles and, and even a book about that. And how that event uh, caused uh, global changes in the temperature oh, yeah, and, and, and in the climate in general. Due to apparently increased and really intense volcanic activity in different parts of the world. Yeah, definitely. So during that era, the volcanic activity generated an effect called global dimming that uh, obviously filtered lots, some of the sunlight right, and reduced the temperature of the planet a little bit, uh, which was enough to cause devastating effects it, in agriculture. Yeah, apparently it was like 1% or something like that. 1 I, degree uh, one centigrade. degree centigrade or, or 1.5. Yeah, yeah I, I read an article about it. It was really interesting, you know. 
although yeah so you got you know you you got this little ice age right like this yeah you got this little collapse in the sense of, of, of weather conditions right so the the colder weather is called for for uh, changes in your ways of agriculture I guess you know you yeah. adapt to it right yeah so it you know it turns but let's say some of those islands I mean they are small settlements in Polynesia right in, in the Polynesian Triangle the Polynesian Triangle was probably never 100% fully aware of itself right oh yeah definitely. there, there yeah. were regions within the triangle and well, Polynesian Triangle is obviously a foreign construct yeah but yeah Let's say there were regions within the the triangle that were aware of the existence of many other archipelagos oh, within yeah. that region in the triangle, yeah. but I re- highly doubt that there was anybody, anyone, who that knew had that everything, the oh, whole no. triangle. Nah, not not at all. And um, definitely, the the thing is that those islands uh, in in the, or those regions in the triangle, the 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 Tara, there, there was a consciousness of, of, of uh, or a sense of a region. They made yeah. sense of, of themselves. Okay, this is a region, whatever. That some of these smaller islands that were being affected by the Little Ice Age so much, um, it's not like it was a complete collapse. Before collapse, people uh, bailed out. People just went out of there because yeah. they, there were greener pastures. Yeah, there were definitely. safer, better islands to go. So they just decided to take everything and say... All right, the, the weather is all weird now. The climate is all weird now. It's been like this for ten years, for fifteen years, twenty years maybe. And my children, well, there's not a very good prospect here for them. So let's move to Tahiti. Let's move to Rayatea. Let's move to, to, to Samoa or to safer. Hawaii or to a much better place, right? Safety in numbers, I guess. Yeah. yeah so they moved back to safer areas. Or Rapa Nui. Right? Rapa Nui was one of those islands that, that got probably waves of, of refugees, <laughs> and uh, and they came here or they went to Mangareva, right? Either yeah. of those islands, and that's when those five islands in between became. Uninhabited. That, that bridge point between Easter Island and the rest of the Polynesian world. Yeah, yeah. Just separated. Yes, right. completely. Completely. Yeah, and that was thirteen hundred. So there you have a collapse. But this island continued going, right? They I mean, going. we're still here. So yeah. like, the collapse never happened. If you ask me, in that sense. Right. Yeah. But the thing is, like, the collapse, under my perspective, occurred much later and for different reasons, rather than just ecocide and. and things mainly i guess between the contact with the western the arrival of the westerners to me was like the major prime point for the collapse of israel the collapse of rapa nui uh, the introduction of diseases right the lack of immunological system properly you know the lack of contact also you know weakens your immune system and i guess that you know conditions weren't good ships weren't that health you know it's not like it's not like people it's not like they sent the best people on the ships, you know, like, it's not like they were the most hygienic people of them all. All the Europeans that didn't like Europe, those people in land, they just sent them on ships, you know, to, to get the hell out of there. Maybe they were anti-vaxxers. They were. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should send them on a ship, you know, and live, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, that, that brings a lot of diseases, you know, and that... And that Fastly, you know, swiftly just erase and bigly, like <laughs> and bigly, swiftly, and fastly. They just uh, in every synonym you can think of, just um, uh, produces a lot of death rates, right? The re- death rate in the island just skyrocketed, you know. Yeah, definitely. And I guess that's the collapse. And give it also, I guess, in the sense, the, the, the hierarchical system of the Rapanui people back then also. Uh, help that a little bit, you know, because the very specialized people, the very specialized uh, uh, systems that they had, not a, not a broadly perspective, but um, yeah, uh, I guess that just uh, killed a lot of specialists, killed a lot of people. The need for renewal, the need for the renewal of the civilization. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting that, but let's be. 100% clear about this that the people that talk about collapse of Easter Island never refer to the collapse you are mentioning. Oh, no, no. Which, which, well, this, which could be discussed. It, it's arguable, right? <laughs> but uh, 
it's arguable, but it's not um, uh, completely like set in stone. Well, oh no, not at all. It's arguable, all. but that would be closer to a, like the romantic idea of a collapse. Oh right? yeah, definitely. I mean, the, I guess the whole idea of collapse just begins with the lack of, you know, the 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 uh, the, the infamous question that Jared Diamond posted on his book. You know, what was the last Rapanui thing? Dude, thinking when he cut the last tree. Dude, what were they thinking when they cut the last tree? I don't really so think they, they. Well, we do have, for the most part, evidence of. of there was cut never down a, him. There, there was never a down. last tree. There was no, never, never no, a no. damn last tree. That never existed. You know, like, we still have trees. Uh, we have lots of trees. Lo there's six extant species. Six extant species of trees on the island. Yeah. So what the hell was Jared talking about? Maybe when he came as a tourist and with his uh, uh, luggage, uh, someone at the airport during the reception told him that we all the trees that he was seeing were introduced trees, right? Because that's true. When you arrive at the airport and you yeah, look around yeah. and, and, and the, all the trees that you see are introduced, but that's yeah. not does not apply to the whole island. Right? No, not at all. So that's uh, that's ridiculous, right? But well, Jared. Man, my man, you should have done more research. You right? should have done your research. Yeah, man. definitely. Uh, you you did not do field work on the island, and you you relied on who knows what, right? So whatever article, I guess. Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, and uh, outdated information. I mean, till the 1970s, 1980s. I respect William Malloy. William Malloy. He is like. Uh, I mean, we're He's sitting, a, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, and our giant is William Malloy. Malloy. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. One of our giants, Malloy, Alfred Metro, uh, those are those are the giants here. Yeah. Um, so, William Malloy believed in the collapse. Well, definitely. But, the but evidence pointed. The evidence back then pointed that. To that's the, it, right? You know, like, so there's a big difference between. Uh, having or, or making uh, sense of the evidence that was found till the 1970s yeah, right? definitely. Uh, compared to now that we have a lot more evidence 40, 50 more years of research uh, have, have been done right? so today the collapse is no longer uh, well, justified what, well what do you think about Terry Hunt idea of collapse with the rats I mean uh, the, the that, whole he's the whole opposite of the collapse man well he's, he's completely the opposite yeah but, uh, but, but the eco side in that sense like there the, are two schools now that are kind of well uh, established I established yeah. um, and for for the casual casual reader right yeah. so on one hand you have the uh, Jared Diamond uh, of this world right yeah and um, Jared Diamond's book collapse right and some other copycats that kind of write based on the same yeah stuff, I mean whatever right? other Google search you yeah. can find yeah and then you have uh, well a very important very important authors that are uh, like eco side uh, proponents are Paul Bond and John Fleming yeah, yeah. Uh, they are quite isolated because they have tried to take the academic approach uh, mm -hmm. Jared Diamond has tried to take the influential approach yeah. they are completely opposite things in many disciplines like you can be either academic or popular you can't be both things right at the same yeah. time uh, that's too bad but that's how it is right so um, Paul Bond and John Flanley are quite isolated academically speaking I, I don't see many followers uh, to them uh, so I guess they failed to provide enough evidence for their version mm. of the of the history, and then you have the other side that are the anti-collapse people. Terry obviously, Hunt. nowadays, or, or when you see and the people that write about the island, that has written about the island in the last I don't know four, five, six years, ten years, yeah. fifteen years, they are the overwhelming majority, right? So the most popular ones are obviously Terry Hunt and Carl Lipo because they have written this book, The Statues That Walked, that, uh, that has sold a lot. It's, I don't know if it's a bestseller or something, but it has yeah. sold a lot. And, and even though it doesn't rival collapse in terms of, of popularity, I still get lots of visitors that come to this island that have read The Statues That Walk. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And they ask about it. Right? But they are anti-collapse, completely anti-collapse, understood like Jared Diamond understood it, that it's an internal collapse generated by the internal logic dynamics of the island, 
that the islanders were foolish enough to get rid of their forest, to de deplete their resources, and as a result, the society went through famine, warfare, and ended up becoming a bare... Uh, Going back know. in time to... to yeah, no, it, it ended up being a... Survivalist. A, a pale shadow of what it once was, right? Yeah. Whereas Hunt and Lipo, uh, they claimed the complete opposite, that there was no collapse here and nothing even close to a collapse. So even though I agree with Terry and uh, Carl about, like, in the basic premise that there was no collapse on this island, sometimes and in several things I think they took the argument too far, especially when it comes to the rats, the, the rat thing, right? Yeah. Uh, have you heard about the rat things? Yeah, How definitely. would you summarize this, their argument about the rats? I mean, essentially, they found a couple of fossilized, let's say, coconuts of the, the palm trees and with teeth mark of rats in them or yeah. or, or something similar to it. And, uh, and they found evidence of, you know, just uh, rats eating co coconuts. And they, I guess they just, in a more, I guess... Uh, abstract thought way uh, they they just continued the, the narrative okay if you introduce rats in a, in a place that you don't have where you don't have any natural predators they exponentially grow that means you know that you have uh, a real deal in your hands right and uh, I think they found I'm, I'm not really sure I don't want to I don't want to go you know just pointed fingers but probably 10 pieces of of coconuts or something like that, a couple? I, I have no idea. No. Well, I, 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 I as far know. as I read, like, that's that's pretty much it. And, uh, well, that's, if I had to summarize it, probably, you know, that would be it, you know. The yeah. rats ate the, 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 the coconuts. Yeah. That's pretty much it. So there were only palms on this island. Yeah, well, according to them, yeah. <laughs> and okay. also, also, it's the only place in the whole... Polynesian world where it happened. Where rats and trees cannot coexist. Yeah, yeah, because like apparently in the rest of the Polynesian world this, co this collapse never happened. So. And even in continents where there are plagues of rats but yeah. the trees are still there. Yeah, Yeah. well, uh, yeah, so that's why that's what I mean, right? Uh, they take the argument too far, right? Yeah, it's too and in polarized, order, I guess. In yeah. order to, to disprove the collapse, you don't need to go to, to the other extreme. Right? Like, uh, there, today I got, I got this question from a uh, from a traveler that, that was uh, out there in a, one of the field studies we were doing in, in Baihu. We saw some of the fallen statues of Ahu yeah. Ahonopainga uh, in the Hangate'e Bay. And uh, he said, after a while, when I was mentioning something about the intertribal war, the intertribal warfare, wars yeah. and, and, and warfare on the island, he said, well, I read in, in the statues that walked, I don't know, I, I read the book, but I read it like a few years ago, so I don't remember every single line of yeah. the book, right? Yeah. But he said something like, I read in the statues that walked that uh, there's absolutely no evidence and no signs on, on, on the bones of the island of uh, blunt force trauma or any trauma that would indicate that... Um, Oh, tr like any trauma in the sense of, of skeletons and, and fighting, right? Of course, the, the bones should show, indi should indicate, should, should have evidence of uh, attacks, right? If there was war and they had weapons, Well, right? we do have it. That's, but that's the thing, right? They said that in the book, it said, uh, Terry and Carl, I'm sorry if you're listening to this, but I, uh, that's what this guess, that, that's what this travel understood from your book and if you said it well too bad because there's plenty of evidence and the biggest expert in bones uh, like I know I've read is Douglas Owsley Douglas Owsley is an expert in bones not just here from this island he has studied bones everywhere in the world and he claims that there's a relatively small percentage of bones that show signs of trauma obviously of trauma yeah. uh, uh, inflicted by weapons right? yeah it's a very small amount but there are bones that show trauma, right? The, the, so the fact that you don't find bones, I mean, let's, let's, let's imagine that you take a little sample, right, of, of, and you find like, I don't know, 10, what you said about the coconuts. Right? Yeah, yeah. 10 coconuts with biting marks from the rats, and then you find 10 bones that have no uh, trauma. Oh, that means, uh, what, what does the evidence say? So you're saying, that uh, there is a... Um, Hashtag Kathy Newman. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying that uh, there's um, no evidence of, of trauma because there are 10 
10 bones that don't indicate trauma, so voila, we have a new hypothesis well, the, the, about the island. So this is the thing, right? Under This is my perspective. This is my own uh, uh, perspective on it. I, the fact that we have evidence of, col- of, of, of warfare in the sense of, you know, not even, let's say not even weapons, but just uh, the evidence of bones, of trauma, skulls, full skeletons, full of obsidian, uh, broken bones, yeah, and stuff like that. But that, that doesn't mean either that the whole collapse happened because of warfare, right? Sure. That just, that just, that's just evidence of, of warfare. That doesn't mean it, 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 that's the reason why the island collapsed, and this is the thing, right? So yeah, war, war does not mean collapse. That's the thing, that's the thing. Conflict doesn't did, mean collapse. Did, did Europe collapse after World War II? They went through the space uh, race, race and, and they, yeah, they, they yeah. did the biggest scientific advancements in the history of the, yeah, the world, I mean, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So the, the thing is, in this sense, one thing doesn't mean the other. The fact that you find pieces of evidence that, will, that are part of that all that will fit the narrative of a war of a warfare yeah. on the island doesn't mean that that's that the whole overwhelming evidence of of of, uh, of collapse is gonna be oh warfare that just means it happened yeah no and especially if if, if you try to okay so we want to uh, prove that they're the collapse people are wrong so are they wrong in everything the collapse people no. Because deforestation occurred, statues were toppled. Yeah, definitely. They were toppled. They did not fall from earthquakes or they did not tsunamis fall from tsunamis or, 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 or natural stuff. phenomena, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, there's a chance that some statues might have fallen for other reasons, yeah, but, the, the, but the, the, the great majority and the overwhelming evidence in the case that they were toppled, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, these people, the collapse people, are right in some of the diagnostics. They are not. Uh, not in the diagnostics. They are uh, right at finding some symptoms. It's just that they are their the diagnostics, diagnostics are, are bad, bad. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, really bad. So the anti-collapse people, instead of saying, uh, "Oh no, uh, it's not just your diagnostics that's bad. It's the symptoms that you're finding are not actually symptoms." Right? They're trying to deny that those are. are yeah, and, and I think that's the polarized conversation that the the scientific field has. You know, I think it's very polarized and. And if you take a, if you take account of all the variants that occurred, you know, like under from what I understand, from what I've studied, thanks, thankfully to all these people, I'm not saying that, you know, the fact that the, the that I think that, the fact that I think they're wrong doesn't mean that they're wrong or doesn't mean anything. These people did research, and the vast majority of evidence was found thanks to this. For have you done your research? Yeah, I've never <laughs> done my research, so that's it. You know, <laughs> okay. like. So a proper research on the island. So I'm still thankful for it. You know, I'm just analyzing the same evidence that they proclaim in their conclusions too. But the thing is, if you take a, a range of all the variants that occur on the island, there, there, there's no such. I believe I'm convinced of this. There's no such thing as one reason why everything happened. And this is the. And I think this is yeah. why uh, the 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 whole conversation just got wrecked and very polarized. Yeah, because the the idea of finding one answer that will answer everything universally, it's it's wrong. I believe, I believe in that because I mean you should not try to answer the whole thing. Um, you, it's okay to have a like a hypothesis, like the, the unified hypothesis. So since I believe this, this is my I'm focusing on this because I am also against hyper specialization. Right, uh, when when people have become too much specialized like nowadays right that you do a, a PhD on um, weaving baskets in um, some <laughs> isolated town in the Middle East let's, uh, let's... between 1571 and 1573 using only certain kind of bark and that's a PhD thesis right so uh, that's completely ridiculous, right? Lesb- what, what? Lesbian dances in Tibet between 1952 and 1953. Yeah, man, man, <laughs> please stop it, right? Yeah. So we we need to find the big answers. We we need to answer the the the, A multidisciplinary, uh, the big questions. Yeah. The big questions. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. We need to answer the big questions. So obviously, I understand that not no single person 
can do it, right? No. So it's okay to specialize in certain fields, but without losing the, the, the broader perspective. Yeah, the, 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 the narrative, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, how I mean, does this fit in the narrative? And if it contradicts the narrative, well, uh, that's great, that's it. fine. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and let's work on a new narrative so we can fit this evidence into it. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, that's the whole idea. But that doesn't mean that just by finding a tiny little bit of evidence that would go against a tiny little part of the narrative, then, oh no, let's change the entire narrative. No, so no, it would be like finding a tiny little gene, like epigenetics, right? Oh, yeah. So if epigenetics prove that a certain tiny little thread of the theory of evolution, uh, I'm, I'm just yeah, yeah, making yeah, it up, of yeah, course, yeah. Uh, is, is not perfect, oh no, let's make a new theory because evolution is wrong. Right? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not like that. That's not how it works. Yeah, no, definitely. That's not how it works in every single level of analysis and anything in life. I think. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, if you find something new, you you either try to make a sense of it, or to just you know just uh, sketch a new idea. But that's the thing. That's the beauty of it that you can play with it. You can. It's malleable in that sense. Yeah. Your ideas are malleable. Evidence is not. Right. That's the that's the cool thing about science. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, I mean, if you take account of all these things, if you take account of the thing that okay, the the uh, most of most of the evidence again like points out to that people burn down probably the, the, the areas in systematically in different, in different okay. Let, let, let's answer the questions, man. Let's yeah. answer the questions. Right? Yeah. Let's what, try what, to. What what, what, to. what about the um, the the. Or how do we? How would I answer the the deforestation thing? We know for certain it was slash and burn. Right? When they say rats, well, I've never seen a rat bringing down a tree, knocking down a tree. Have you seen one? No, it's not that it knocks down trees. It's just the, 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 it's rats, the source the, of the, the, the tree, the, right? The, rats, the coconut. The rats of the island are quite big, but they are not beaver sized. They they cannot knock down a tree, right? So obviously, it would have been a big business. Yeah, no, man, no, it's impossible, right? So even if they eat the seeds, what happens to the trees then? They can eat all the seeds for all that matters, right? The yeah. trees outlive the seeds. The trees can live a thousand years, more than a thousand years, right? And there were trees on this island, we know, in the 1400s, in the 1500s, right? Well, also the fact that not only the, ve the vegetation wasn't only palm trees on there. That's another thing. I mean, if, according to these people again, the whole collapse, according to Jared Diamond, happened because people were stupid. It's stupid, and they just cut down all the trees in the sense of of um, of their cult because they were transporting the statues with the trees. Thus, uh, that's what happened. Oh uh, yeah, that's that. That's one of that's the most, the most ridiculous ideas ever. <laughs> yeah. Please don't. Yeah. Uh, all right. How many statues were transported from uh, Rano Raraku's quarry, the, the main quarry of the island? Around 400 statues. Um, and of those 400 statues, 300 made it to the final destination. About 100 statues did not make it to the final destination. Um, and the statues that were transported, the great majority, are around four meters tall. Yeah. Like, 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 three, four meters tall, so that means a weight of 10 tons, approximately. Eight, ten, eight to twelve. Let's yeah. say to give, give a range of weight, eight to twelve tons. So they are not so the biggest statues of the island. Uh, the great majority that were transported. It's not like all the statues are fifty tons, sixty tons. The the forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty ton statues are a very small minority of the statues of Rapa Nui, right? So even if the statues were moved by using trees, something that they just don't care to prove. Because there's absolutely no evidence that they used rollers. That's well, that, 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 that's another topic it, for it, for next. It's just a made-up story by some archaeologists that thought that it was the most practical way to do it. Yeah. So it's the archaeologists that claim that the islanders used rollers, and it's the archaeologists then that blame the islanders for using a theory that was made up for by those same archaeologists. Yeah. That uh, they used rollers. So how were the how could they be so stupid to move the, tr the statues with rollers? Excuse me, man, but that's a theory, that w a, a, theory a hypothesis, a, a, a speculation that was invented by some foreign archaeologist, right? Yeah. It was never said by anybody here on the island. It was never, no, ever no. said by anybody no. on the island. Actually, oral tradition says something completely different. Yeah. 
Yeah. Not even not you couldn't even take it from oral tradition. So sure. it's not even that. So, but let's say do, doing the math, quick maths. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, how many trees would have been needed to transport all four hundred statues? Uh, and let's assume that all statues actually made it to the final destination. And let's assume not just those 400 statues made it. Let's assume that every single attempt at making a statue, so around 800 from Ranuraraku, were transported and successfully reached an Ahu. 800 statues of variable weight, right? How many trees would have been needed to transport all of them? Definitely not 3.6 million trees, which is the number that existed on the island. Let's say about 16,000 trees would have been needed or All something right, like yeah. that. And that's how much of a percentage is 16,000 trees for 3.6 million trees? Right. And the other thing that's ridiculous is that only the trees with straight trunks would have been uh, used to move statues. And this island had mostly trees with twisted trunks yeah. that would have never been used to move statues. And those trees also disappeared. So what happened to them? Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't resist any analysis. It, I mean, if, if you scratch the surface a little bit, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, no sense at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, again, you were answering the way you will answer the collapse. If I was a traveler and I will ask you, how, what happened here on the island? What would you answer? Well, it was slash and burn. Uh, people were cutting down trees to change the use of soil. This island was not immune to the Little Ice Age. Uh, Little Ice Age brought lots of uh, trouble to the agricultures of the island. So the people that worked, the farmers, the, the people that worked at, yeah, at planting taro and banana and sugarcane. Gourds. And, and gourds and stuff like that. Gourds are a little bit more, more resistant to, to droughts. And mm -hmm. same with sweet potato that's more resistant yeah. to droughts. And that's when sweet potato became the staple food yeah, on the island. Definitely. Due to this, right? Um, so... When that happened, uh, obviously, lower temperature, drier climate. So what happens then? Uh, your production of food declines. It declines yeah. dramatically, right? Less water, right? So the crops, you, you go and pull out the potatoes, you pull out the, the taro, you pull out the yams, and they are small. They are smaller. You've seen, we've been through yeah. like six years of drought. Oh, yeah, definitely. Years definitely. here, can... right now. We're 2018. And since 2011, there's not a single year with even average rainfall. So 2011 was the last one with more than average rainfall. And then 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 had been uh, less rain than normal and a lot less rain than, than a normal year. And you've seen the mangoes. Mangoes are teeny tiny yeah. right now. Yeah. They're really, really small. They look like cherries. <laughs> they're really yeah, small. Yeah, they do. So, uh, the they look too. like grapes. Man. And in the, the figs too, you know, you can see the changing in the season. You can see the changing in the in the, in the the ripe season of the figs. Yeah. And, and yeah, so, so that happened to them too, right? Drought, cooler climate, cl cooler weather, less sunlight. So, smaller crops. So, they're producing not enough. So, what can they do about it? They double the sizes. They look around and they see, oh, this is our farm. This is our land that we have for agriculture, right? And they look around the farm and they only see trees that are useless trees that, well, they, they provide wood, but they don't provide food. Why yeah. do you need f wood for if you don't have anything to eat, right? So you cut them and you burn them. And then you enrich and fertilize the soil. So they started doing it in some sections. They build a, a fire break and then they burn the area there. Once it's burned, this, you can start planting there, and it will work wonders. Yeah, the soil is fertile, it's, it's great, it, it's been fertilized by the ash and so on, but long term, it's really bad. Yeah. It's really, really bad. So long term, it increases erosion, um, it ends the windbreak effect, it uh, diminishes the capacity that the soil has to retain humidity, yeah. because... Uh, well, no roots. And no shade. Yeah. Uh, and less precipitation yeah. because the trees condensate some of the water that's in the air and they generate precipitation and also less organic material in the soil because the leaves of the trees there, there are less trees yeah. less leaves that fall to the ground less provide organic organic material. material yeah so well what can you do when the soil erodes then erosion is advancing faster from the coast inland yes. and you, then you look around and the the 
eroded soil is not producing any food and and you're starving man and you're hungry yeah. so you look around and again more trees and you say okay let's cut these down now and you cut them down again and you start this uh, feedback in which every time a portion of the soil erodes which will happen faster and faster because the less trees yeah. you have the faster, faster the erosion yeah. advances forces you to cut down more trees in turn accelerating the erosion and and so on right so that's the main cause of the deforestation was change of use of soil and evidence for that is everywhere. You take a core sample from anywhere on this island and you will find charred uh, carbon, you will find yeah, carbon and trees that were burnt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. charcoal and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So systematically so, people burn down the areas in order to create crop spaces. So, so that's basically so, it. So you're saying these people... Yeah. yeah. So yeah, well, that's a very fairly... That's a fairly thorough answer, man. Yeah, well, let me ask you the other question. Go because on. Because the other argument is the statues, right? Yeah. So, okay, we know why the island was mostly deforested. Yeah. And by the way, we can uh, explain a little bit to our listeners that the deforestation stopped at some point when the uh, not when the Little Ice Age ended, but actually it stopped when the islanders discovered a way of stopping it. So. Well, how does that fit in the collapse narrative? Yeah, yeah. You, you know what it is, right? The well, rock, rock gardens, gardens and, yeah. And, yeah and, rock, and, rock gardens and Manavai and, yeah. and, and other agricultural innovations. Yeah, right? definitely. So uh, how does that fit in the collapse narrative? They started building rock gardens. And the rock gardens in turn I mean, obviously it, had an effect on the statues because the effort to build those gigantic rock gardens... So essentially imagine a huge carpet of rocks everywhere. Yeah. Time, you know, fairly big for human size, fairly small for for for, for a truck, for for a a truck train. <laughs> but uh, but still big effort. Remember, there's no there's no horses, no domesticated animals on the island. So when it comes to the statues, the effort is that it's one single gigantic statue to have to move. When it comes to the rock garden, uh, it's it's numbers. It's not the yeah, sheer weight of of every single rock. It's no, just the no, no. number of rocks that were moved around the island from quarries, from uh, outcrops, yeah. to the place, Traces. to the farm, to to the garden. Right. Yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, the effort was so huge that obviously uh, people redirected their energies towards the building, the building of rock of gardens rock gardens, yeah. and diverted that effort from the construction of, of statues. So. When it comes to the statues, right, the question is, uh, or, or the collapse guy would tell you, oh, but all the statues are fallen, how is that not a collapse? You had 300 statues standing on different ahu along the coastline and even some in the interior England, of the yeah. island, and they were all standing at some point, and not long, a long time later, all those statues fallen, face plant, yeah. or backwards, or, but yeah. fallen. Right. Yeah. So how do you explain that, anti-collapse guy? Dude! Yeah. So yeah, well... I guess it happens because of many different reasons. People never do things for one specific reason, right? Tribal wars play a part in it. Uh, introduction of diseases and, you know, just... Uh, I guess that also plays a big part in it, you know? Like, I guess a way to explain the, the, the idea of high death rates and uh, on on the population also brings uh, disbelief in people and why not to you know uh, I lose belief I lose respect I lose I topple down the statues you know I burnt I collapsed the, 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 the system in that sense you know in a sense of revenge also you know like in the idea of revenge against the, the the I guess the idea of the ancestors not protecting us the mana not 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 reaching out for us abandoning us right so I guess. But and what, what do you think was the main driving force for knocking down the statues? The main driving force. That's a good question. I guess. Just uh, not tribal wars, really. Not if you if you ask me, I don't really think it was tribal wars. You think it was the same people from the same from village? village? Yeah, yeah. For the most part, yeah. Because it takes a lot of effort to do this. Thing. So you're a collapse guy. I'm not a collapse guy in the sense of like. In the sense of like the the because the process is long, you know, the process of, of toppling down of statues it's it's not it's not short it's not ten years, 
It's not five years of, of toppling down of statues, right? It's not, definitely not. So it's not like a, a collapse is usually a fast paced thing, and this is not, you know, the evidence points out. Yeah, but 60 years for uh, a thousand years, it's short. Yeah, it, it is a short process. But it also happened that the whole cult system also changed, you know. So it, 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 again, like, it depends on what you call collapse, because, like, if you think about it, Okay, you could say the, the, the island collapsed in the sense of the, 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 the way they, they, the cult system was performed, right? Well, something to me does not add up when, right. when it comes to that, right? All right. Uh, the statues, all right, the statues, first of all, um, lost their, uh, well, we're focusing too much on the statues, but anyway, they um, lost their capacity to bring people together. That's, yeah. that's for certain. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. uh, all the effort of the tribe went together to move a statue at some point. That effort was no longer there no, because no it, longer there, yes. it was the rock garden and fertility, yeah. like increasing fertility of the soil, what brought the community together. Yeah, right. Definitely. And then later, cult of fertility is based on it. God Rongo, the avatar yeah. of God Rongo, Make Make, Make, Make and yeah. then the Komari symbols everywhere that are, are from post-contact period. Yeah. That we'll delve into that much later. So that's one thing. And then also you have the um, thing that if the statues are not bringing the community together and due to the effort of building the rock gardens, the statues are getting smaller and smaller and uh, not anymore as, well, refined as, as before, right? Mm -hmm. So um, how are you going to... Um, or, 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 or why, would, why, would people, why would people go back together in order to topple down their, the statues? Yeah, so, that's, so, that's, so, that's what so the thing is, right, the statues lose their uh, spiritual importance. Yeah, definitely. So the statues were once part of the cult of the ancestors. The cult of the ancestors declines with the statue making. Yeah. Because they were the symbol of the... Of the Cult yeah. of the Ancestors. That was the epitome of it. So it starts declining, the Cult of the Ancestors starts declining too, and the statues lose their tabu. They do not lose their mana necessarily, but they lose their tapu. Yeah. Right? So they, know, they are no longer tapu, they are no longer sacred. Yeah. But they are there. And they are mighty, and they look huge, and, they and still, they're monumental. Yeah. And they represent, and they still kind of reinforce the tribal identity. Yeah, right? because people were born under the the shadow of those statues. They were born in front of them. They are they've been there since since like forever. Yeah. Right? So why should they be angry at the statues? I don't get it. Right? The statues are there. Uh, have been there whole time. Why should they be angry about the statues? They were not. Well, the, you could you could argue the introduction of diseases being the reason of it. I mean, it's not necessarily not necessarily the main reason, but. You know, like you could argue that the the idea of that, the 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 con with with the contact with the Westerners and the introduction of diseases, like so because if you think about it, so we agree that uh, the statues all fell after contact with the first after Europeans. the contact, yeah, perfect, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that that that's the thing, like yeah. it occurred during that period of time. Well, Why wouldn't it happen before? We we well, yeah. we can make an exception for some of the. Um, uh, cultural layers that we can find around that uh, we find platform built over platform yeah and sometimes the original statue that was there was a lower lower yeah. to build a new one on top yeah right? definitely a bigger one a more mm -hmm. mighty more impressive more well, powerful and and also and also the the idea of building mass graves yeah but that that was after the statues were toppled yeah yeah yeah, yeah but but Okay, so your hypothesis is that when the first Europeans came here, and the introduction of disease that we all agree happened, yeah. and the Syphilis. high, huge mortality rate that we all agree that it happened, uh, led to people uh, being depressed. Right? Well, I guess it was a very psychological uh, trauma in that sense, okay. in the idea that you know, think about it. You don't. Something is happening, and you can't answer it. And you can't stop it either. It's a, it's a malevolent power that comes. People in. have always found the answers to things that I they mean, cannot answer. Of, right? of course, of yeah. course. But but what's Even the way? If it's, it's not the right answer well, in well, most well, cases. Well, what would you? 
I, I, I'm not saying it, they had the right answer, I mean, yeah. but probably uh, my hypothesis is that their answer is that it's, you know, not protective, okay. not protection. All and right. that leads to psychological traumas, you know, like uh, on a collective level, not only uh, not at an individual level, but, okay. but also in a collective level. But have you level. read the accounts of the explorers from the 1800s? Uh, not explorers, the whalers, the whalers or a yeah, few yeah. other yeah. explorers and so yeah. on? Well, they are very clear they're that very there, clear. there are intertribal yeah. wars. Yeah. They are very clear no, that there yeah, are two, no, two sides definitely. of the island fighting against I'm each not other. Say, I'm not saying that didn't happen. Yeah. I'm saying that, that I guess, the, I will, I will argue, I will argue that But you, the, you, you be, believe that the intertribal wars have nothing to do with the statues? No, 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 no. I do not. I oh, do yes, not believe yes, that either. Yes. I believe it's a multivariant thing. It's not All just right. one thing. Right? Tribal wars was also a reason why these people toppled down. Okay. It will be. It will be just. It will be. I don't like to say stupid, but it will be um, naive. Naive and irresponsible on my part to just take that out of the way because yeah. it happened, right? Yeah. Now. I also believe that probably the ones that held the vast majority of resources were the ones that were more uh, intertwined with the tribal wars than the others. Okay. So major tribes against lesser tribes. Yeah. Right? So you also have a sense in... in, in I, I guess I will argue that, you know, like most the most amount of probably uh, a tribal warfare that occurred in the island was between the major clans, major, major tribes and... The big and tribes. The big tribes and the lesser ones were, were, uh, you know, like sub if not subdued to the bigger ones. Just well, we, uh, we know that all the lesser tribes were highly influenced by. Uh, I don't, I don't know. The Marama tribe was highly influenced by the Miru. Yeah, certainly the Ra'a yeah. and the Hamea yeah, were highly I mean, influenced social, by Miru too. Social experiments, right? And then like you have that. the uh, tribes like the Ngaure or the Koro Orongo mm -hmm. or the Hiti Uira that were highly influenced by the Tupahoto tribe, yeah, right? So. Yeah, it's it's like always the Miru and the Tupahotu were like were the, like the, the, the major yeah powerhouses yeah. on, on, on and each then, side and, of the and then and then spreading in, in, if you take a look like spreading the territory around them you have lesser tri lesser lesser man spreading man spread <laughs> if you man spread around I think I think they collapsed because the the statues were man spreading <laughs> and just feminist <laughs> radical feminists came to the island and, and started carving <laughs> fertility symbols. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's you should write a book that, on that. Gonna, it, it will be a bestseller. It will be yeah, a bestseller. It yeah. will be bullshit, but yeah. it will be a bestseller. Well, bestsellers are in most cases bullshit. Right? Yeah, definitely. Anyway, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, that. Uh, but again, going back to to, to, to reality. Yeah. I guess yeah, like like there's also I I believe a hierarchy when it comes to the tribal wars. It it wasn't. I don't really believe that there was a bloodbath that. Involved everybody at the same time. No, no, definitely not. Right? No, the the, oh, the conflicts were just minor Mi uh, quarrels here and, and there. And, that, that, and that's my point. Yeah. And that's my point. If the but knocking down were... a statue is not difficult. It's not difficult at, at all. You just have to take it out of the balance. Once once it's 16 or 17 degrees tilted, the statue will I mean, fall yeah, on its but, own. But but still, like no, like you could. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I I don't. Let me just wrap around the idea a little bit. Like, I no, guess, I, I guess, huh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> no, the, uh, yeah, no. It, it, the fact that it doesn't take too much doesn't mean that uh, uh, it was for. It explains everything, right? Like all the statues have different sizes. All the statues have different import. All, the, you know, there just are it, different importances between different uh, I, I monumental. Think Monuments, you know, yeah. there's not all the monuments are equally important. So the ones more important were left over for last, I guess. You know, the the, the ones less important were were put down first. Do you think so? I, I guess so. Unless, unless there's some some like indirect evidence that it seems like Tongariki was one of the first Ahu to be. Uh, well, yeah. If you if you, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you think about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think about it, yeah. Because if if the wars were between the bigger tribes, then you might think yeah. that will be the, the you will go for the bigger one, right? Sure. You you will go for the big fish, not the small fish, right? So how can we summarize this this second podcast? Well, the first one, the other one was just the pilot. How can we summarize this uh, the the collapse? We, I, I'm sure that well we There's we could lots, con continue yeah, yeah. talking for like three hours, four hours, but. Uh, 
we will we will return to the subject later. Uh, by the way, shout outs to my my man Dale F. Simpson. He wrote a, a, an, an article about this, um, disproving the whole collapse notion from the lithic uh, quarries, right? The, the yeah. areas where they got the. And he found out that there were lots of um, um, like the quarries were shared by different groups on, on the island. Like you find in different areas of the island, the western side, southern side, northern side, you find uh, rocks or adzes and tools made from the same quarries, um, exactly the same quarries. Right? Yeah. So um, they were sharing quarries, and they were sharing the quarry of the statues. I mean, I obviously mean, it's something yeah. that we've known since forever, yeah, yeah. and this time we can also be, prove it with the uh, quarries for the, the lesser stuff, the tools, right? Mm -hmm. So they shared the quarry of, for the statues, they shared the quarry for the tools, and that would also go in accordance with uh, evidence, agricultural evidence that proves that there was no decline in the production of food in the rock gardens yeah. during the era of the alleged collapse in the 1680s and, and the seven, Onwards, early 1700s yeah. and yeah. so on, uh, which is a study that has been done by several authors, but the most remarkable of them all is Mara Mulrooney that, um, that wrote this article about it. She did the whole thesis about Hanga Ho'onu and how in Hanga Ho'onu there's no proof of the decline in the production of food, right? Yeah. And uh, the spatial settlement and, and, and all of that. So. Yeah, basically, with, with that said, um, I think that, well, in my case, I'm completely far away from the collapse people. I don't think that there are any uh, high-level, high-tier and updated uh, archaeologists that's supporting the collapse. No, and no. the ones that have done field work recently on the island, they, none, of them, the yeah. none of them supports the collapse thing. No. But let's sense. not uh, go too... Um, too far in the other direction. I mean, uh, like 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 some authors have that have, have more, gone too far. This place also was not the the peaceful hippie. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Island like, like, with everybody yeah, that, smoking joints yeah, yeah. and and, 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 and holding hands, hands and, and praying singing to songs. Go. Yeah, and yeah. And it was not like that, right? It was, it was not like that. Yeah, that's that's, that, that, that's the thing, right? Like I think that's the way to summarize it. The fact that. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a good way to summarize it. The fact, the fact that we now we all concord that the collapse never happened. Sure. But that doesn't mean that there were. It's the contrary, right? Yeah. So we, I, I guess it's a, it was a big process of different things that occurred in the island, and and um, we can all, I guess, agree to that. You know, we we can all agree to the fact that nobody was um, was as you said before, no hippies. Yeah. But no, uh, uh, I guess collapse cr either. No, no crazy uh, bloodbath Blast. seeking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. It's like what they are doing now with the Vikings. Have you seen that thing? Oh uh, yeah, most of it's yeah. In the TV shows. Uh, yeah, but that's oh, they were just bullshit, bloodthirsty uh, barbarians. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's just popular like that. belief. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's well, just popular because that belief, sells, right, man. Yeah. So, yeah. so here it sells. Collapse sells. It oh touches, yeah, yeah. It, it's the cautionary tale, and it's the yeah. whole thing that oh well, if we do the same as Easter Island, our whole planet will go to hell, man. Yeah. And, we and, should go and, vegan, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Right. So. No, so, man, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. And 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 the anti-collapse sells much less than the collapse. But the anti-collapse sells because since collapse sells so much, there are some people willing to listen to the counterpart. It's right? it's in, it's the natural counterpart. But it will of the never collapse. completely. Uh, it will never sell more than than the collapse. Now I still think that the collapse sells less than the aliens, right? Uh, than the. Uh, we should talk about it later. Yeah. Like what all? Maybe next me next podcast. I don't know. Esoteric so, stuff let's, and, let's, and, let's and we'll alien see. explanations. <laughs> I read, you know, just a little sneak peek. I read a long time ago this article. This in it was this French article. Well, it was a sensationalist shit. Oh yeah, you you're know? the the French francophile yeah. Uh, guy. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, they talk about the f how the fact that the the, the the rock that the statues were made made of wasn't from this earth, but it was a uh, it was not found anywhere else. So according to these people, you know, tough is unique and it was it comes from a meteorite and uh, and that's the explanation of it. so we should talk man. and we should we should we should cover this shit because man, man that was really compelling I, I think you've converted me 
Yeah, I know. I know. Did they have a religion related to the aliens? Did well, they have of course. A, a church, an alien church. Yeah, yeah, the Westboro. <laughs> All right, man. So it's been a great pleasure <laughs> to, to uh, um, bring this new podcast to you. Uh, on my behalf, Cristian Moreno Pacaretti, I uh, thank you for listening and stay there, subscribe to our channel, and uh, you'll get every week a new topic of discussion about the island. Yeah, definitely. And if you have any suggestions, please do leave it in the comments. If you have any suggestions about what kind of topics you want us to cover, also let us know in the comments and, uh, and we'll see to it. Yeah, and, and maybe in the future we will be able to interview via Skype uh, Jared Diamond and maybe Terry Hunt uh, to, to do another episode. Yeah, I think it's unfair to, yeah. to not let them do their, their yeah. fair argument. Yeah. You know? All right. Bye-bye.